Hello everyone and welcome. We are looking at a 3D printed inline four cylinder engine. Now inline four cylinder engines are really common in economy cars uh, for their advantages in size and cost and smoothness and efficiency. Now this particular engine we're looking at here is a 22RE out of an older generation Toyota Tacoma or 4Runner. Looking at our different components, we've got our fan right here, which as you can see is belt driven. It's just got a rubber band uh, making that rotate. We've got the intake manifold right here, which actually has a functional throttle. You can see that that opens and closes in there. Pretty neat intake manifold there. You've got the valve cover here up on top. So you can see uh, the gear driven cams right here. Uh, so a single overhead camshaft, which will be rotating to open the individual valves. If you're paying attention super closely, you'll notice that the cam timing is actually a bit off, uh, but you can definitely get an idea of how this valve train works using the single overhead cam and these rocker arms to open the individual valves on each side. Checking out the other side of the engine, you can see the exhaust manifold. So you've got the four different pipes leading into a single collector. We can remove this. And then looking inside, we can see the individual exhaust valves opening and closing. There's one exhaust valve and one intake valve uh, for each of these cylinders. Now you can remove this cylinder head and then we can see the pistons underneath and you can see quite obviously why they call this an inline four cylinder, four cylinders all in a row. Now you've got cylinders one, two, three, and four, and you're going to be firing for every 180 degrees of crankshaft rotation. And that's going to start with one, three, four, two. So you've got power, 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 kaboom. Again, the technical term. One of the interesting things about inline four cylinders is why the pairs of cylinders move in the way that they do, with the inner two pistons moving up and down together, as well as the outer two pistons moving up and down, opposite the inner cylinders. Now part of the reason this is done is for an even firing interval. You want to fire every 180 degrees, so you need at least one cylinder at top dead center for every 180 degrees of crankshaft rotation. But this flat plane crankshaft design is chosen to keep the engine balanced and minimize vibration. You can see that for first order forces, the pistons moving up and down opposite one another balance each other out. That said, for secondary forces, the forces do not balance out as they both point upward at top dead center and bottom dead center. This tends to limit the size of inline four cylinder engines because as they get larger and rev higher, they tend to vibrate more. This can be countered using balancing shafts, but that means a more complex engine design. Now, if you're a bit confused on the differences between primary forces and secondary forces, uh, as well as balance shafts, I will include relevant links in the video description. Now, the cam timing is obviously a little bit off, but pretty cool to see. You know, you've got your pistons going up and down. You've got your single overhead cam rotating, uh, and that's opening the individual intake and exhaust valves. Now, some of the advantages of this style of setup, you know, it is pretty common in economy cars. And, you know, part of that is because of how compact this is. Uh, it's generally pretty simple to work on because you've got a single cylinder head uh, rather than a V or other styles of engines that split uh, the cylinder banks up. Now, you do have a higher center of gravity as a result of this style of engine just because you've got your cylinders stacked um, in a line, but they're vertical uh, rather than horizontal or in a V. Uh, and you also do have a secondary imbalance with these inline four cylinder engines uh, as a result of the secondary forces of those pistons moving up and down. Now, a huge thank you to Eric Harrell for lending me this 3D printed engine. You can find a link to it in the video description. If you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.